the most important thing is for me to not just guide with like, you know, one direction, but make sure that I'm guiding with empathy, I'm leading with empathy so that I know exactly what the other person needs to grow and learn and to feel, uh, you know, that sense of belonging and community in the work that they do every single day. Hey, it's Nikki Llewellyn Gregory, and you're on Gut Plus Science. You're in for a fast-paced, storytelling, action-item-rich leadership growth experience. I hope you make this podcast a habit. I consider it a leadership mentoring tool. Learning together makes us better together, and that is how we change the world around us. Let's get to it. Hey, it's Nikki back on Gut Plus Science, and I am thrilled for my conversation today. I often say, well, I think even our introduction that you hear on this show is this is a mentoring platform. That is what we created it for. We are here to impact workplaces so that more people experience awesomeness and meaning at work and to be able to constantly learn these nuggets from people that have done things and you know can shortcut us or teach us things that we can learn from so we don't repeat maybe same mis- mistakes or we can repeat their success. So today I'm thrilled because I kind of feel like I have a new mentor in my life. Also her new company, our company, People Forward Network just moved our, or we're in the process of moving our uh, payroll over and working with their company and just thrilled about it. So a new you know, relationship as a partner to our company, and then I feel like a mentor. So Nami Baral is with me today. She's the founder and CEO of Neural. This is an AI for global workforce management. So it fits perfectly into like all these people leaders that want to know like uh, an awesome tool that is uh, efficient and automated and can just help us all, you know, do things better. So excited to share that with you because it's a new tool to me. I just recently learned about it, but there's so much backstory here. So I was like, is it okay if we do this episode a little bit different? I just want to learn from your journey, like this meaningful work journey that Nami has had. And so that's what we're going to do. You know, she's been in tech for a long time, long time, whole life. One cool thing is that uh, she was with Twitter before they went IPO. So she got to see like the whole thing of like, I can't even imagine. Like we get to kind of learn a little bit of get behind the scenes maybe on some of those learnings today. And then from there, I mean, she's been alongside AI since before any of us really even knew what that was. And then really started to dedicate time in 2017 to you know, what's come with neural and so many things in this AI space. So whether it is learning from a multi-time founder and exiting well and healthy or AI stuff, I mean, I just think we have such a uh, wealth of knowledge here. So Nami, I am so excited to have you. And I would love if we can kick off with, you know, as a founder, repeat founder, having amazing success, like, I'm just going to throw this out there you probably don't have to work anymore if you don't want to, you know, uh, you've had successful exits and your creations are, have just done really well. And now you're creating again. So neural is a new company. I'm curious, like what is meaningful work to you and why neural? First of all, thank you for having me here. I love the platform that you have created, Nikki, and uh, the content is just so amazing and so helpful. So I'm obviously, uh, you know, an avid listener. Um, so meaningful work. You know, I think about it often because what gives meaning in life is such an important question that, you know, I think the as you as you get older, as you go through multiple different kinds of experiences, you think about that a lot, right? And for me, you know, work has been such an uh, such an integral component of my entire kind of adult life, right? So I've spent so many years, days, minutes, hours working, and it it consumes my life, honestly. So I look at it almost uh, in the same lens of what is it that a human being requires to get meaning in life overall, right? Now, not, work is not always life, but it is a very significant part of life. So uh, what gives meaning to work and what is meaningful work for me is, I think, four core components, right? One does it give you a sense of community, right? Like, because relationships, community, like, you know, that sense of belonging is very important in life as it is in work. Uh, You know, meaningful work needs to be integrated with what kind of values you have set for yourselves, right? Like living with a sense of purpose and integrity is super important. Those are values that are extremely important for me as I think about any kind of work or life in general. The third thing I would say would be is this something that gives you 
yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to sound very Marie Kondo-ish, but like, is it something that gives you joy, right? Uh, is it something that gives you growth, that this learning, this feeling that you are achieving something? I think those kind of experiences need to be a very significant part of work to make it meaningful. And then the last thing is, is it going to be something that you're like, you know, kind of proud to be your legacy, right? And unless these kinds of things are, uh, they exist in the work that you're doing, you know, I don't think it can be truly meaningful. Now, that said, those are the values that are important to me. These are the components that are important to me. To each human being, there can be a, you know, a different kind of balance of these kinds of things. Some people may value legacy, some others may not. Some people may value community at work. Others may just be like, you know, I just want to do cool things, but I don't really care about relationships at work. That's absolutely okay. But these are the things that I think are important to me when I think about doing any kind of work and in life in general. I feel like we could take this episode in a completely different direction. I'm like, <laughs> oh boy, I have so many questions um, and thoughts. Uh, one is, so this company, People Forward Network, where Gut Plus Science and these other shows live, are we have this stick figure. His name is Manny. Um, so Manny is our brand mascot. And we have had him since day one and around him says, do meaningful work, live meaningful life. And he's clicking his heels. He's like skipping. It's a skipping. Like he's like so happy. He's like annoyingly happy at work. Right. And everybody's like, oh, here he is again. Right. Like just always happy, always optimistic, you know, and it's, you know, this, this thing that, you know, people will say, work's not everything. And like work, you know, you're going to, on your deathbed, you're going to look back and, you know, regret the hours and whatever. And I'm like, you know, where that applies is to the majority of people that hate Monday, right? Uh, where it doesn't apply is when you find meaningful work. And what you just said, where I am in a community of people that I surround myself that I just really enjoy. They make me better. And my values, like I get to live out my core values at this place and what I do. And like I get energy and and I'm brighter because of the work that I'm doing. And dang, I'm proud of it. Um, work all you want because you know what your dinner table conversations, when that's happening, the dinner table is so much better. The community you live in is so much better. Your kids are so much better. Everything is better. It's just maybe managing like how to be a mom and how to do all the things, right? Like, and we're going to get to that later. But that is, I think the key here is like, when you have that alignment work, it's, we were born to do work. We were born with a purpose to go and serve. And so that brings me back to my question. Why Neural? So Neural is my third company. My first company, uh, you know, we sold it to Twitter. And, uh, you know, as you had mentioned earlier, you know, we went through, you know, pre IPO Twitter, post IPO Twitter, entire ebbs and flow, really dramatic place Twitter, you know, a very, very fun, uh, you know, kind of stories for a cocktail conversation <laughs> when we meet next. But uh, after that, uh, you know, in 2017, after, you know, being at Twitter for several years, I decided to uh, leave Twitter to start my last company, which was one of the original. Uh, AI super agents in finance. So just to give you a glimpse of what that is, and I'll connect it to Neural uh, in a little bit, is imagine you doing an entire financial negotiation. Like, for example, can we get our credit card interest rates reduced with Chase, Wells Fargo, some of the top banks in the US? Being able to do that entirely with a bot without any human in the loop, right? That's what we had built in 2017. This was before Transformers. This was before ChatGPT get, uh, got released. It was, uh, you know, we were first movers in that uh, ecosystem and the business did extremely well. We had, uh, you know, a great liquidity event in 2020 through a, a, an exit via sale to Acorns. Uh, Acorns is obviously one of the larger new banks uh, here in the US. During that process of building that AI product in financial services, what I realized was the entire financial services industry, right, like multiple trillions of dollars of TAM, right, total addressable market, uh, that entire industry revolves around one critical piece of information, right, that's direct deposit. So everybody looks at this piece of data, and that's what determines what kind of mortgages you are going to be able to get, what kind of credit cards you are going to be able to get, whether you get rent or not, how your credit score is dependent on all of these things, right? That thing determines your entire financial identity. 
And when I look at the ones, you know, the kind of companies that control that at the source of the data as a system of record, these are extremely old companies kind of built before the internet, the, the ones like ADP and others, right, who uh, are, you know, kind of trusted with this data, but have not been able to innovate on any fronts at all, right, just because they are so archaic and just don't have the ability to really do much with that data. But I saw an opportunity to really create a meaningful kind of platform for human progress. That's what we call, uh, or, and, you know, that is the vision for Neural is how can we make sure that by serving this very critical industry, right, like how your payroll uh, gets to you, but then building it around what does the human on the other end of that need, right? Regardless of where you are based in the world, regardless of your, uh, you know, kind of country's macroeconomic fluctuations or, you know, uh, volatility that you may be able to experience, you still have to make sure that you go to work every single day, you get, uh, you know, a paycheck and you have to take care of your family. So how can we make that entire experience better and materially better than what exists today, right? So not just 1x better, 10x better, but 100x better. And how do we make sure that this is something that, you know, can just go with the tides of time? So that's when I saw a true opportunity to kind of build something generational in the payroll and HR industry with the focus ultimately on the human component, but making sure that the payments, compliance, and all of the considerations that are needed and necessary to take care of the human in the middle is done with advanced technology. So Neural is obviously leveraging agentic AI, one of the most cutting edge, you know, kind of components of the AI, uh, I guess, transformation that the industry is experiencing right now. But we that is front and center to what we do. And we're leveraging AI, uh, agentic AI to empower global payroll and HR. So companies based in the U.S., based, uh, you know, in 150 countries around the world, they can hire anyone anywhere in the world, do it entirely compliantly and do it at the click of a button. Uh, that's the world that Neural is enabling. And I think we're making the world a much more equitable, much more, uh, you know, kind of decentralized, distributed place. <laughs> that's just fascinating and awesome and amazing. And, you know, you may already have some of this feedback, so you have actual stories already, but also maybe we just like think into the future of like the stories that are going to fill your heart for the outcomes that Neural will provide to the leaders and the people that are using it. Just if we can talk about, okay, so I've been with this like very old school, traditional uh, payroll company for many years. And, you know, my struggle is like the clunkiness of the portal, like the online interface. And then they changed how they do customer service. And so I don't know what's going on, but like their ticket system where we would get like a return you know, conversation quickly, it not happening. And then we missed two payrolls. And I was like, I am done. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so I won't call them out. Uh, I understand everybody has challenges, but if we think, if we just think that's a extreme issue, just, you know, people are in an average, like using an average everyday payroll. What are the stories of the difference in how neural creates just a different life for them? Then they're like, thank you. What are those stories? You know, we think about uh, Neural in the context of, you know, there is the technology, but ultimately we exist to solve problems for our clients, right? And uh, it is very important to build in that way because uh, technology alone is not the panacea uh, to all problems, right? Ultimately, different people have different kinds of setups and they may need different things. So if, let's say, you are a small company, like five-person company, right? But post-COVID, you have people in five different states. So all of a sudden, you have the same requirements as something that an enterprise company pre-COVID would have. Multiple states to register on, multiple payrolls to figure out, multiple, you know, kind of compliance requirements and HR uh, requirements, right? And that is if you are simply a U.S.-based company. If you, let's say, have two additional contractors in Estonia, then your problem is now becomes like, you know, that much bigger, right? How do you get the, the contractors paid in real, uh, you know, in, in time? How do you make sure that you're actually complying with the local laws and regulations? And if you have the right contracts in place for those international contractors. And so 
you know, even for five to seven person companies, this problem kind of has become much, much, much bigger and, you know, has introduced a lot of negative externalities to how you do business, because ultimately you don't want to be spending time in payroll, right? We do it because that's our business, but you have to care about your business. You do not want to be spending a lot of time dealing with all of these headaches. So the best stories that I know are from companies, small and big, who are just, you know, who come to us and realize that number one, neural takes care of all of these things for you. Uh, so it saves you time. It saves you, uh, you know, money, but then more importantly, it saves you the headspace to be able to focus on your business. Right. So that's number one. The second thing is preserving the human element, whether you are a five person company or a 5,000 person company, neural gives you dedicated account managers from the very beginning. Right. And so despite being an agent to AI powered platform, we enable that human component when it comes to customer success because it is that important, right? That human touch, that uh, you know, ability to talk to someone and just vent or express your feelings or just like you know, help understand the kind of problems that you're going through. That is so critical because then we know exactly what we need to make sure that your life is better. And ultimately, the goal is that you do not have to spend time in payroll, HR, compliance, because we should be able to take all of that burden off of your shoulder, right? Have you heard of that, like, you know, monkey on the shoulder reference, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, like, founders, operators, executives everywhere have so many monkeys on their shoulders, right? Like, so many things that they need to figure out day in and day out. This is one of those things that you should not have to worry about. And Neural takes that problem away. In any given, you know, for a typical size company, let's say a mid-market company, they may be using six to 16 different kinds of tools today across health insurance, payroll, uh, you know, uh, going having to go to contract, uh, you know, lawyers to, uh, you know, navigate contract law, things like that. And then also international wires, payments, uh, expenses, timesheets, all of these things. They may be using six to 16 different tools today, which Neural is entirely able to replace for our clients, right? So there is material, uh, you know, kind of savings that you can see in terms of the time you save, the money you save, but once again, the highlight is the headspace, right? Because ultimately that is the most scarce resource for every human being. And it's like, you know, just think about the person in your life that has served as an amazing like coach or mentor, and you just know that you can always count on them. And you're so grateful for that. I'd put it like that. It, this is the situation like for us. Um, I don't know if you've ever done that exercise where you take a piece of paper and you cut it in four, good, bad, love, hate. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, everything in the what I'm bad at and what I hate is what you do. And so <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much because you are solving my problem so that I can live in my, my love and good. Yes. Um, and I think that's just so important to find, you know, great vendor partners that are truly partners, not just a vendor, right? It, that's, that's the key because then you're in it together and that problem solving and you have a relationship. It's like, I was just at my bank, I had to go there today to sign some papers. And we were talking about the difference, this banker that I have, I mean, she goes above and beyond like she's helping a friend of my right, mine right now. And she keeps me up to date on how she's helping my friend. I mean, not confidential information, but she doesn't need to do that. Like, and she's super busy, but she is just incredible. And I'm like, I will never leave her. Like I will, she's just so great. And that's like what I think all of us deserve in our businesses, but we have to work for it. You got to find those and you got to cultivate those right partners. So I'm really, really excited to to partner with you. And I want to, I want to ask like, why did you choose the HR space? You could do anything with technology. You could solve any problems, right? Probably. Um, but why the HR space? Yeah. So great question. And I get this question a lot, actually, uh, you know, from investors, from friends, from family, uh, you know, from people I've met over the years. I was building AI super agents before, right? So like I could be going and building foundational models right now or like, you know, building some other kind of hot AI agent in a, in a really glamorous industry. But the biggest problems that need solving tend to be in... Uh, you know, in, in places where uh, there's not a lot of glamour in the work itself, right? But they are the things that make the most meaningful difference in how a business operates or, or how a human being is uh, treated, right? So, 
you know, when, when I was building AI agents, I always built it with the core idea that ultimately any kind of revolutionary technology needs to be built for humans. Humans need to be at the center of who you are building for. And I do think AI is, you know, now ushering in a new kind of industrial revolution. There's going to be a huge disruption that we are already seeing also, but even more so to come, where jobs are going to change and who does what kind of work is going to materially shift because of what AI is enabling. But that said, how do you think about the world of AI where you do, where you put humans front and center, right? So that's what I had been thinking about, you know, as I was building my last company. And I knew at that time, like, you know, we need to build a company that focuses on the human being and then, uh, you know, really make sure that AI technology is being used to advance human progress, to make sure that people are getting help and assisted from it, but they are not being replaced, right? So how do you augment uh, human work using AI, but not replace the humans underneath it? So the best way to work in that particular category is obviously making sure that you are building tools for human resources itself, for the people that are going to be taken care of, whether it's, you know, just entirely human workers, or it's human workers coupled with AI co-workers in the future, right? Making sure that we're building tools to take care of the humans on this side is super critical. So that's why, like, you know, when you think about building something generational, you have to make sure that, you know, 30 years from now, what is going to happen to the workforce, right? And who are the ones that are building core tools and core products with a focus on human beings? You know, HR was the right kind of industry for me right there and then. And so, you know, everybody tends to think about like, you know, HR is not that glamorous or sexy as like, you know, building AI super agencies, but you can build AI super agents for any kind of use case. And to me, this is the most, this is the most material thing you can build for the longevity of human progress. So awesome. I have to ask this question uh, and because uh, I'm like, I've had a hard time pronouncing it. So neural, where, where does it come from, that name? Oh, thank you for asking that. Neural is named after neural networks, right? And neural networks, once again, are the founding kind of uh, blocks of artificial intelligence, right? And so when you think about building any kind of AI product, they go through a series of different kinds of neural networks that learn from each other. And so when we built uh, neural, we're building all of these different components that, you know, obviously lend itself to artificial intelligence. But with the human in the center, it's also, a, you know, kind of a confluence of artificial intelligence plus emotional human intelligence. And so that's why, you know, it felt like, you know, an homage to neural network intelligence in general, how that gets created would be apt for a human focused company. <laughs> that's so cool. You know, it's really rare that you can talk to somebody that's like, like as genius as you are, like you can just tell, like you're just really smart. Um, and that, you know, we we're all born with different things. And it's like, there's a massive gift that you have about your like intelligence level. And then the part that is really cool is a lot of times when that's the case with humans, what I've experienced is the, the, the heart or the connection point of people might not be there. Right. And so it's really cool that you have both of those. Um, so we started out this conversation around like meaningful work and you were sharing about the components of, you know, sense of community and values alignment and joy. And are you proud? And if you could break down like a couple things or maybe one thing that you do as a leader of the people you lead to really help them tap into their meaningful work experience. I think this is an interesting time to point out that when I call myself CEO, and by the way, Nikki, I love your chief meaningful work officer title, right? This That's wonderful. Uh, and it's so, you know, kind of uh, celebrates the ethos of what you're trying to do for the community that you have built. Uh, for me, when I look at the CEO title, I don't think about it uh, in the context of chief executive officer. Obviously, we execute. That's my job. But I think about it in the context of me being the chief empathy officer, right? I lead with empathy. I lead with the understanding that every human being is different. They have different personalities. They have different egos, different ambitions, different things that makes them tick and makes them go. They're passionate about different things. So the most important thing is for me to not just guide with like, you know, 
one direction, but make sure that I'm guiding with empathy, I'm leading with empathy so that I know exactly what the other person needs to grow and learn and to feel, uh, you know, that sense of belonging and community in the work that they do every single day, right? So it's not one particular kind of set of experiences or emotions, but making sure that I'm empathizing with the person that I'm, you know, kind of doing the leading for so that they each can feel like, you know, they are getting customized attention, customized, you know, kind of uh, growth and values while still being able to kind of lead the entire team together. That's so cool. I love that. I love that. My takeaway that I put in the notes is, what is the core attribute behind your title as a leader, right? So we all have titles and, you know, sometimes people can't pick their title. Like I got to pick mine and whatever, and that's, I like it. Uh, and thank you for the compliment. And But behind that, it's like, what is that? And you're like, empathy is the core. Like a title is just the words, right? And it's important so people know like, you know, who you are, but that's really cool. Like, what, you know, just to challenge our listeners to think about what is the word behind your title that really like locks in how you show up. So I would like this, you know, this other angle of what you do and what your practices are. Is there a activity or question or a assessment tool? Is there something that you're like from a activating our people and helping us, you know, have more of a sense of a community and values alignment and all that, that you do with your people, like a tactical thing? Yes. Yes. Um, during every interview, I ask people, what was the last thing you learned? Like, teach me something that you learned, right? And the reason I ask that question is not necessarily to kind of figure out like, you know, a technical acumen or a business acumen or anything like that. It's just to, everybody tries to learn what interests them, right? So it is a way for me to kind of get in touch with, is this person, what is this person interested in? What are the things that, you know, really makes them passionate? What are the things that they do outside of work willingly, right? And so for some people, it may be, I watch, uh, I watch sports and here's the thing that I learned about uh, UFC, right? Like how UFC operates or for others, it may be about, uh, you know, I learned this really interesting trick about content marketing the other day, or it may be just that I learned sewing the other day, right? Like, you know, all of those kinds of things it kind of helps me understand how does this person really value knowledge and learning and in, in what areas, right? And so uh, leveraging something like that has helped me kind of get closer to really in getting to understand the person behind the work rather than just, you know, kind of focusing on the, you know, quantitative skill sets itself. And uh, it also makes for a really, really great icebreaker question once the uh, once the employee gets hired, because I feel like I know them a little bit more than the others on the team already. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, easier to remember. Like I, I love to teach, like learn how to storytell as a leader, because when you're storytelling, people remember the story and they kind of tell it in their own way. But when you hear their story and you hear like this thing and you're always like, okay, how's that like organic garden going? Like, and they're like, thank you for remembering. But it's something that brings like more of a recall factor for us to be able to make a meaningful touch, you know? Mm -hmm. um, this time is flying by. If you want to come back and do a series with me regularly, I mean, I feel like we have tons to talk about. <laughs> I'd be happy to. <laughs> that would be so fun. Yeah. Um, one last thing before we go over to our lightning round. So we have someone that has been in the world of AI for so long. Uh, I can't not ask, you know, you're talking to many leaders that really care about people. That's why they're on this journey with us. Most people are either nervous about AI, overwhelmed, like there's just a lot, you know? And for us, you're, you've been in it for so long. For a lot of people, this is so new and it's just, it's just a lot. Can you give us just a succinct takeaway on just maybe a different way to look at it or maybe something to do, something tactical or whatever, an exercise? Give us, give us just a little insight on how you would coach us around the world of AI today? Uh, the first thing is, uh, I think, a mindset shift, right? There is an entire world out there that will never care about AI and does not have to care about AI either, right? Just the same way there is an entire, there's billions of people around the world today that don't care about, uh, you know, the US dollar, 
right? Because it's not something that they deal with day in and day out. So, you know, the world is obviously vast and there are different kinds of needs and different kinds of products to be built around, obviously making sure that focusing on the human component is super critical. Second, I think for leaders, you know, uh, executives, operators uh, in this space, wherever, whenever they're, uh, you know, in any kind of decision making, you know, or have authority over how upskilling of the workforce needs to take place, then you really need to be thinking about frontiers, right? Not the average, but the frontiers of technology. So in that uh, sense, like, you know, it is very important to make sure that, you know, your workforce is upskilled and aware about how AI is going to be leveraged or can be leveraged to make their work more efficient. Because AI can really bring material amount of productivity in, you know, if done right. Right. And second, uh, to not really be scared too much about what uh, AI is going to do or like, you know, in terms of disruption, because I think there is uh, going to be a lot of regulation and guardrails that are going to be effectively put in place for, uh, you know, making sure that AI is going to be there to make our lives positive. Right. Uh, and that's, you know, partially one of the uh, things that Neuro is also doing actively is making sure that, you know, our regulators, our politicians who are in the you know, kind of policymaking role are aware about how to think about AI as a technology and how to make sure that whenever regulations or compliance mechanisms are put in place, it is done in a way that can, you know, kind of continue the innovation while making sure that, you know, the human uh, at the center of it is taken care of, right? So I think there are those kinds of things to remember. But at the end of the day, it's just a technology, and technology can be an you know excellent servant and a terrible master. So it's up to us to make sure that we are leveraging it in the right way in the workplace. That's really good. So many key takeaways right there. Um, and I think there is just so much confusion, lack of clarity, the it just a mindset maybe of negativity or like not good things that people think about AI. And I think it just, there's so much opportunity. And I love how this entire conversation you've said, if the human is at the center, right? Like, and then we're like, okay, AI is not here to automate everything and take people away, right? Please, an announcement, <laughs> do not, do not, like we're not taking the people away. We're helping the people with the, with the AI. And so, um, yeah, so many stories there, but we need to move on. This has been incredible. I absolutely love what you're doing, your journey, your story. I look forward to the mentoring in the future and we're going to wrap up with our lightning round. So we always start with your favorite book of all time or a favorite recent read. The favorite book of all time, oh, I'm an avid reader, but um, The Hard Thing About Hard Things, Ben Horowitz, uh, a wonderful, wonderful book about just the journey of entrepreneurship. And even when you look at really, really, really successful founders and entrepreneurs, it's it's a roller coaster, right? Like building something uh, net new is so difficult and, you know, going through just the ebbs and flows of the market uh, and, you know, just uh, going with, you know, just what life gives you is uh, very difficult, right? So uh, that that book really taught me uh, so in so many different ways to kind of be very zen and take a very balanced approach to, you know, the peaks and valleys of entrepreneurship. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, I feel, I feel it. <laughs> yeah. Curious, uh, what have you learned about being a mom and building a business? Oh, so much! Oh my God! Um, when I was uh, when I was um, you know building my last company, Harvest, uh, I was literally on the hospital bed uh, waiting for my C section. When uh, I closed the second round of funding, I signed the you know kind of papers for that equity fundraise. And so looking back at that, you know, those kinds of moments, it's always like, you know, there's a significant trade off in life about, you know, like the things that you care about uh, can always come. They sometimes come at the expense of each other. Right. Like, you know, uh, that would have been a time where I should have just kind of focused on having the baby. But circumstances just so happened that I had to, you know, obviously kind of get the deal done before I went on maternity leave and all of that. So things tend to just happen all at the same time. Murphy's law is like, you know, a consistent uh, 
you know, kind of presence in a mom's life and in a founder's life in general. But the one thing that it has taught me to do it well together, you just need to be extremely resilient. You're going to have to make sure that, you know, you're going to work harder than ever, right, to be able to balance these two things. But I've learned to be so patient and so resilient because of both of these experiences. So good. And it's like the stuff that you can take with you everywhere, right? Like those those teachings. So that's awesome. How about, you know, we were talking earlier, like I work a lot and then like balancing being a mom and family and all of the things. How do you recharge? I spend a lot of time with uh, my family. I try to spend, uh, you know, very uh, kind of uh, quality time with my family. That means, you know, spending time with my kid, but also spending time with my parents, my siblings, because, uh, you know, to me, that emotional nurturing is what recharges me. The second thing that I'd also say is, um, uh, you know, something that uh, has worked for me is I have kind of given up on the things that are unhealthy, right? Like, I don't drink coffee, for example. I don't drink alcohol. Uh, you know, those are the kinds of things that I felt like were not ne- necessary for me to live a productive life. And like, you know, in, in more instances than not, they actually kind of make you feel worse, make you feel groggy. Like, you know, you don't really feel good physically. So making sure that I maintain my physical health has also been, you know, kind of an important element of the recharge. So mental health recharge, spending more time with family, physical health, like, you know, kind of making some changes to my lifestyle so that I'm more present all the time. And what makes you lose track of time? Like this one activity when you're doing this at like the highest level, you're like, oh, I'm just in my sweet spot. Oh, learning something new. I I, I uh, label myself as a knowledge seeker. That is something that I've always uh, enjoyed. So uh, it doesn't matter what new things I'm learning, but uh, when I'm learning something new, it just is one of those things that just get very, very deep into it. It's something that I just like forget the rest of it and go very, very deep on any new thing that I'm into. So yeah, that has been kind of a critical thing about my personality, (laughs) being a knowledge seeker. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. I can share that with you. My husband always makes fun of me. He's like, if there's ever like something that sparked something, he's like, I won't see her for a couple of days, you know, or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like all in. I want to know it all right now. Uh, That's cool. That's fun. Well, thank you so much, Nami. This has just been a joy. I'd love to figure out how we do more of this together. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you after this? Yeah, um, you know, I'm uh, active on LinkedIn, so you can find me, Nami Baral, uh, Nural, N-I-U-R-A-L, on LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter, uh, at Nami Baral, on Twitter as well. And, you know, you can always feel free to come to the Neural website and shoot us an email. I'm a very active founder, meaning I try to touch base with all of our potential clients as well as our regular clients all the time. So you'll be able to reach me at any any time. <laughs> Well, I think I just found my newest mentor. Nami, I so enjoyed the time together with you today and you are really smart and you are passionate and you have a lot of resources and opportunities behind you to help people. And it's amazing how you're activating that and what you're doing to change the world. I commend you and really look up to you. Excited where our future will take us in friendship and collaboration. Here's my truth you can act on from today's conversation with Nami. Number one, meaningful work is a sense of community, has values alignment, and gives us joy and energy. And it makes us feel a sense of pride. I love that checklist slash definition. Sense of community, values alignment, gives us joy slash energy or and energy. And we feel proud of the place we work and the work that we're doing. Number two, human-centered workplaces are a must today. And if you feel like you have some misconception or lack of clarity around what is human-centered workplace design or human-centered leadership. Go spend time on that. Find other shows on the People Forward Network. Feel free to reach out to NAMI for advice. Feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to share with you what I've learned about that. But when the humans are at the center, all of the technology we bring in is brought in to support those humans. The benefits that we create are because those people told us what it is that they need. It is centered and focused with the human at the core. Number three, 
What is the core attribute behind your title as a leader? A great question for us to think about. When other people experience us, is that an intentional reflection, that attribute? Do we need to work on that? Like, how is it that we're showing up? Like Nami gave the example of empathy. So to spend time thinking about the core attribute behind your title, behind the way you be and do, what is that? And is it what you want it to be? Number four, as a leader, ask your people what they love doing outside of work and spend time building relationships and having conversations about those things because human-centered workplaces know that humans have a lot of things outside of the workplace besides just the work they do and the role that they have at work. We have many different hats and it's important to tap into building relationships by having conversation in the space that honors what they love and just see those people shine when they talk about those things. And when you follow up as a leader and you ask about that thing they love again, it just puts a trust deposit into that relationship. And then finally, You know, NAMI's background is around AI for years. And the challenge to us is to think about how is AI supporting the humans on our team? The humans are at the core, the center. And how do we bring in technology, especially AI, to help them be their very best and to have a great work experience? Oh, I'm so inspired by that. You know, many people think about AI in a scarcity way or a fear driven way, and it doesn't have to be that. AI can come along and help us be our best. And that's exactly what NAMI's building. So thank you so much, NAMI, and we'll see you all next time. We just left the world a little bit better. Now, go do something with it.